Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Coding with Halo. Today we're gonna do the part 2 of Zoom. I was asked by one of our fans to do the second part in order to get the persistent token for the Zoom app for Zoom integration. So in order to do that, we have to go and get ourselves an access token for the user. Okay, so let's go right into the code. So the idea here, remember that we have the code, if you haven't got it, you need to go and check the part one of this series, the part one of Zoom integration, where I explain all this code. So yeah, I'm gonna start with that. So remember that this index is get slash, it was going to just load in with the persistent token from the, uh, from the app, from the backend directly from Zoom. So we're gonna remove that and we're gonna do it the right way, okay? So let's go ahead and just remove, well, we're not gonna just remove it, we're gonna keep it for later usages and also for the folks that saw the part one of the video just to get DC of this. So let's go and create a new endpoint. Let's call it ALS Zoom, okay? So the ALS Zoom, which requires the red and the red, and it's gonna be the our main endpoint right now to send the login URL to Zoom. Okay, so in order to do that, we have to let's bring back some of these parameters. So let's do the const client ID is constant dot n dot Zoom API key. The redirect URL. I think we also have it on the cross button. So control new component process dot n dot URI. And we need also the response type, which is gonna be code. So response type is gonna be code. These are normal OAuth connection, okay? A const authorization a URL is gonna be HTTPS and HTTPS zoom .us slash authorize sorry slash OAuth slash authorize response type the response type we also need to send the client ID, which is going to be client ID, and we're going to send the redirect URI, redirect URI. Let me change this to ID so we can see all these variables. Perfect. And now we do like a red, red, red authorization URI. Okay. So that step will actually go and send that to the uh, Zoom login. And once we get back from the Zoom login, we need to have like callback function there. Okay. So in order to get a callback function, it's gonna do up get bar. Slash, let's see, slash callback, okay. So let's do slash callback, and because this is gonna be in a sync, like red. Why in a sync? Because we're gonna, I'm gonna show you why. Uh, one thing that we get from the, uh, from the callback is the code, okay? Like query code, which is the response time type of this all that we are trying to ask. Uh, it's blue because it's blue. Okay. So in this with this code we need to do something. What do we need to do? Like if it's not code then return press status 100 means that no code provided. Okay. If we have the code, 
Corona Dela Kite Advantage. Ok? Error. And if we don't have a code, we need to go into Zoom and say, like, hey, I have this code, transform me this into the access for the box. Ok? So we're gonna do an access here. So we do a response equals to an await access dot post https so dot us slash oauth slash token no like there's no others there and no string params i'm going to send the params to from the run type to the authorization code the code will be the code that we just sent, so we actually need to send this thing. And the redirect URI is going to be the process that then dot redirect URI. Why does it why does it ask for a redirect URI? So it's trying to see like if the callback is being called by the same tag place that we are actually requesting the data. Okay, it's a security matter there. And then we need to add the uh, headers to the headers. And with the headers, we're going to send the authorization and uh, authorization basic. I'm going to do like a buffer. Process that then dot to assume a begin and the process dot then dot from app is simple. Okay, so basically, we are trying to log in with the app itself. Say, so like, hey, this is my login for the app, get me a, an access token for that app for this user that just logged in. Okay, so that's kind of like the whole idea of what we're doing here. Okay. And one more thing, let's actually send here the content type as application x form URL. Okay. Um, so if you are sending kind of like a form saying, hey, this is my data, this is the code, please send me the answer to all that. So at one point, this will answer. Remember at one point the why because we were doing the away, so it's you know synchronous call and we have to wait for that answer. Once we have the answer, we can simply do like a rest JSON response.data. So we can actually have that in the browser to show. Okay. Um let's do also like a catch here. Let's do like console error. Error. Yeah, error. So if there's something wrong, it's gonna send an error. And also, let's do like a send error containing token here. You know, so basically, this way we now have the callback. Okay, so let's actually test this. No, yes, running. If we go here into localhost 3000 out zoom, okay, invalid is my ID, everybody is secret. Let's see what's going on. Everything in token, the white server, the new token. And let's see, oh, it's going to call back. Why? I think that ah uh, okay wait give me a second because it's let me grab a new set new browser here. Okay, so local host thousand of zoom. So it's sending you the login right. So the login is working there. I'm gonna log in with my email.
but also we get two factor. Perfect. Okay. So it is sending the two factor, but it's sending the error of it. So why is that? So the reason of why is that it could be multiple things. So let's divide this together. Okay. So um what it's sending up here is saying hey invalidate credit that you go in secret invalid file. So the reason for that is that we are not sending perfectly fine this um this thing, right? Because we have the call here that it's sending of the token, right? Uh, which is here, so us browse token, the new, the browse reset the authorization code, the code at the red URI, on URI, which is all here. There we go, that's fine. So the problem here is the authorization. Ah, outdoor station. Okay, there it is. Okay, we need to do it again. We could also do local post. Please out send out to. Uh, here. We could write it again. And now let's do it again. Out to. Perfect. Now you can see the access token for the user. And one thing here that we have is that this token expires, right? Like it has to expire since 3599. Okay, I think that's milliseconds. So, two things that you need to do here. Uh, first of all, of course, you need to store this data, you know, store at least the refresh token. And why is this a refresh token? Because what we're gonna do next is you can store the access token if you want. It's a little bit dangerous because with the access token you can do everything on here, you know, all these things. Um, but if we store the refresh token, we can easily get the access token by doing just one call. Okay, so let's let's work on that. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create just you know, just to test this, we're gonna create an endpoint to refresh the token. Uh, normally, you don't do an endpoint for that, you have like an internal function, but let's do here an endpoint so you know you know how to work with that. So let's do like a refresh token, token URI here with a pink as well. Refresh. And this endpoint, we're gonna do a try catch. Always remember to have like something before the error so you know that that's the error and that's the line that you're so you're seeing right now. Recent error refreshing token. Okay, and for the refresh token, one thing that you need is the refresh token. Uh, yeah, I know. So the refresh token, let's say that we send it directly from the query, you know, red query refresh token, you know. So one thing that you need to do here is you need to do another action. So post response equals to axios dot post with the https zoom dot us slash on slash token no and the objects let's send the gram and the brands will have the gram type refresh token and the refresh token will be the refresh function if you need we don't have to set anything here and besides that we send the headers 
which is gonna be the outdoor station. Same thing as before, you know, basic buffer. But let's just copy that so we don't do the whole thing. You know, remember key secret with the buffer is just like a user set it up. And let's do a content type application text that allow form URL included. Okay. Uh, yeah, basically it looks at like a REST JSON response data. So when we just did, it's a way for us to refresh the token. So we don't need to store the access token, so it's a little more secure. We do have the refresh token, but in order for the user to get like to steal our access token, they have to also have the API ID and secrets, like the app ID, I, yeah, app ID and app secrets from the app to actually get, you know, access to the access tokens on that way. So let me show you how this works. So if we go to the browser, we copy the access token. We can do like localhost 3000 and refresh token with the refresh tokens here. Yeah. And we should be able to see. Oh, sorry, I forgot to put here the await. Okay, so let's run this again. Restart the server once again. Yeah, perfect. So now you can see it got a different access token from here. It's a different access token. You see. Something changing, and basically you're refreshing, so it it doesn't expire, right? So every time that you access it, the expired thing is resetted, so you always have like an up to date token to actually do your function. So yeah, that's basically how you do OAuth with Zoom. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. I'm gonna update the GitHub repo for this code um, so yeah thank you very much and see you on the next episode bye bye